everybody, welcome to Transformation Tuesday Bible Study. Today we're going to be discussing personal spiritual warfare and your victory in that. Before we begin, I would like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody watching understands how to pray in the spirit against any battle that comes their way from either outside forces, curses that are still oppressing them, demons or spirits that are still oppressing them, Lord, instead of them reacting in the flesh. Lord, and to continue to give them the wisdom so they'll have discernment. And instead of being reactive, they are proactive. Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. We'll be using the New King James Version of the Bible, but you can use any acceptable version. Let's begin. So while it is true that we are to pray for our enemies, um, we are also able to vent our frustrations or give our frustrations to God so that he can do something about it. This is when, you know, that enemy is filled with spirits, maybe demons, they're attacking you, they're attacking you at work, they're making your job impossible because of whatever demon or spirit is in them. So you can use the Psalms to pray against those demons and spirits by asking the Lord to take care of it, as opposed to taking matters in your own hands and fighting the flesh. So that's what this is about. It could also be a pesky sin that you keep going back to. You can pray against that. Also, curses that are still oppressing you, spirits or demons that you feel are oppressing you. World issues, after you've done your research and you realize, okay, what the true issue is and how it's going to affect your daily life and how you have to handle things day to day, you can pray against that as well using the Psalms. So that's the way they're supposed to be used. You're really pay, praying against the spirits and the curses or the sins that are still oppressing you, all right, that are working through other people. You know, and God is a just God. He does this because, you know, he is a God of justice and he also wants to probably bring that person, not probably, he definitely wants to bring that person into the body of Christ at some point. So if they receive some kind of punishment, they may realize like, hey, you know what? Why am I receiving this punishment? What did I do? They may change their behavior, right? They may be moved to another department altogether. They may just leave you alone completely and they won't even know why, but it's because you asked the Lord to step in. And then the biggest victory is that that person might eventually come to God through Jesus Christ as well because of the punishment that they received, the chastising that they received, maybe other punishments that they received because you know what? They were enemies to other people or demons or spirits were moving in them that were making them enemies to other uh, people that they manage or people that they work with, for instance. So that's pretty much what this is about. It's about you not taking matters into your own hands, giving it over to the Lord to handle, letting him step in and letting him be the decider, letting, letting him bring out the justice, especially if you're righteous and blameless. This is very important. You must be repentant. You must be blameless when you're using the Psalms. So that means, of course, that you have to repent beforehand, which we're going to go into later, how you prepare for battle. But you need to be blameless. You need to not have caused the problem that is causing your issue. For instance, if you're always going late to work or you're always starting late and your boss is upset, the boss is rightfully upset, even though they're not a Christian, because you are always late. And God saw that he also is the one who got you the job because you're so submitted to him or you should be committed to him that he's the one who got you the job. If he sees that you're at fault, you're not going to get any justice. Okay. And yes, that, that boss of yours or that coworker, whoever it is, can still uh, come into the body of Christ down the line. So you have to make sure that you are blameless, that you are repentant, that you've assessed the situation, and that whatever happened wasn't caused by you. If you have a reoccurring sin that keeps harassing you, that you didn't use your own free will to go and do that sin, you know, you 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 didn't you are trying to avoid it, and you're reasonably trying to avoid it, and you haven't done it. That is that is being blameless. But you're to blame if you went and committed that sin. Yes, you can still pray against it. Yes, you can still repent. But you have to make sure that when you're using these Psalms against your enemies, against spirits, against curses, that you are blameless and that you are repentant and that you are righteous and holy in God's eyes. That's the only way we, these Psalms work. And you'll see as we go through Psalms 35, I feel like that's a good one because even though it's long, it pretty much encompasses all the kinds of spiritual warfare that you can uh, be going through just like 
you know, the kind of struggles David went through. All right, let's continue. So you want to make sure to ask the Lord to send forth a hedge of protection. That is the word of Jesus. You know, you preach the word of Jesus around your house 24 hours a day, day in and day out. And then you also ask him to send forth warrior or combat angels. We talked about angels before, so you can check out that video. But what this does is it protects you from any disruptions, any distractions, if you truly believe them. You have to have that faith that he's going to do it. If you don't have that faith that he's going to do it, then it's not going to happen. End of story. Then you also have to repent of your sins known and unknown. That means that you confess of them, that you ask him for, you repent of your sins, of course, and then you ask him uh, for his forgiveness. And the point of repentance is that you are not going to do that sin again. Yes, you can come back and pray, but it'll be, it's when you backslide after that, it's, it's something that's very hard to come back from. You may even have to do some deliverance prayers like I talked about the last time. And again, if you want to use Psalm 51, you can, or you can just use your own, but it must have those three things in it that you confess, you repent, and that you ask the Lord for his forgiveness. Okay. And you confess of sins known and unknown, even stuff that you may have thought of that you didn't know about, but God knows. He knows what went on in your head. He knows that if that thought becomes an idea, then it can become a sin that you're going to commit. So it's important that you confess and repent of sins known and unknown. And then also that you put on the full armor of God. You want to make sure that the Holy Spirit is strong. Why? Because you will be praying with the power of the Holy Spirit within you. You're not to be praying in the flesh. You do these prayers in the flesh, you're not going to get anywhere. So you have to pray with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to have faith as well. Okay, you need to wear the gospel on your feet. You need, if you even need to repeat the gospel to yourself, do it. There's no harm in that. Okay, put on the helmet of salvation. You want to protect your mind from any uh, other forces entering in or trying to enter in. So this is like a super protective thing for you to do before you get into uh, praying whatever psalm it is or whatever spiritual warfare prayer it is and asking the Lord to step in. So you want to make sure that you're clean, you're protected. And then, of course, you're ready to go. Let's continue. All right, so everybody, open up your Bibles to Psalms 35, verses 1 through 10. The Psalms 35, verses 1 through 10. Plead my cause, O Lord, and with those who strive with me, fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also, draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like shaft before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For without cause, they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. And all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him? Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. So here, David is really asking the Lord to fight against his enemies that are fighting against him. He's just before the Lord. These people are coming after him. So he's asking the Lord to step in and take over and intervene. And you can do that same thing in the name of Jesus. Okay. And then he's also asking for them to be scattered. Basically, he wants them slipping and falling. So you want those spirits, those demons, the oppression to slip and fall and get away from you. That's the whole point. Again, you're not going after the person, you're after the spirit, you're after the problem, you're after the dilemma, the issue that is affecting you, and you're asking the Lord to take care of it. Whatever traps were set up for you, you know, there are people who have co-workers that set them up all the time. He's asking for that trap to be diminished. Let those demons and spirits from that person fall into that trap. That's a perfect example. Okay, so you can do these types of things 
by asking the Lord to step in and do them, letting him take care of that. These are just different adjectives and different words that you can use. The angel of the Lord was here. And since, you know, there's no angel of the Lord anymore, right? Because we have Jesus Christ. You could ask Jesus Christ to step in. You could also have angels be sent forth. Warrior angels, combat angels to fight those demons and spirits so that they leave you alone. They leave you alone. Or, and God brings down the judgment, which we're going to talk about later. But basically, you are asking the Lord to do everything that he can to keep these demons away from you, these spirits away from you, this uh, oppressive sin, this sin that keeps oppressing you, this sin that keeps trying to drag you back in, all right, and it's, it, it's an oppressive spirit, really. You're asking to get rid of that. You're asking to have that slip and fall so that it falls into his own trap. It's trying to bring you into a trap, bring you back into that sin, but you're asking the Lord to send that spirit or that sinful spirit, that sinful desire back into his trap put it that way because even if you're saved you can still be oppressed by spirits okay and then also if there's any spirits or demons working in somebody that's your co-worker it could be somebody that you were in a relationship with and now they're trying to set you up now they're blowing up your phone whatever that is you can ask the lord to step in and scatter those that person's demons and spirits yes that can mean a lot of different things that can mean that person can leave you alone but the bottom line is, is that you're not taking matters into your own hands. You're asking to deal with the spirit, with the, the demon in that person, or the, the, the sin that's oppressing you, and get rid of them. Okay, and then of course the justice comes later. So this, these are the things that you could ask him to do. Right? These are just some adjectives. You don't have to use everything here. This, again, is just an example. I know that some people might think that this is a little extreme for them, but it is something that you can use, but you have to use it correctly. And so all you're doing here is, is you're asking the Lord to confuse those demons, confuse those spirits that are after you, confuse that, oppress, that oppress, oppressive sin, that sin that keeps oppressing you, that keeps trying to bring you back and, and have you um, backslide and ruin your relationship with God. Ask him to come in and take care of that. Let him scatter it. Yes, let him destroy it. Don't you want that destroyed? Of course you do. Because the destruction of that is gonna bring you victory. Destruction of that is gonna bring you closer to God. It's also gonna bring other people into the body of Christ to know that God did that and that it is possible. So you wanna do all that. And then you also wanna praise him. I know that we're gonna talk about praising him later, but you wanna praise him in the middle because you know that he's gonna do it. You're convinced that he's going to do it. And God loves our praise and worship even when we're asking him to do something. He loves our gratefulness. He loves it when we show him that we know that he's going to do this. And we know that we're going to be victorious because of him. And what that's going to do to the kingdom and what that's going to do beyond. Okay, let's continue. Everybody open up your Bibles to Psalms 35 verses 11 through 16. The Psalms 35 verses 11 through 16. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend or my brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me, and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease. With ungodly mockers at feasts, they gnashed at me with their teeth. So this part is really about betrayal. Some of you did not experience betrayal, so to speak but that's what this is about. So you don't necessarily have to do this part if this is not you. But if this is you, this could be that your friend betrayed you. It could be an ex-boyfriend. It could be um, somebody in the, in the body of Christ who calls themselves a Christian, but they're really not. Like there's a protest or whatever, and you didn't want to go, or you don't want to be a part of it. And now they're bearing false witness against you or whatever, and you've been so great to this person, but they love that spirit of rebellion, so you're asking the you're telling the Lord about that rebellion. You're telling the Lord what happened, basically, and how nice and how kind that you were to that person. 
the prayers that you did for that person, the money that you gave that person, the gifts that you gave that person, and yet this person turned on you. Not only that, they gathered with others to attack you. And again, you're not going after the people. You're going after the spirit, or you're not even going after the spirit, really. It's God that's going after the spirits that are, are being, uh, that those people are using, or those people are being used by, in order to harm you. In order to make you have fear and doubt, in order to make you act out in the flesh. Remember, you have to be specific here. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, it also says that we will be specific, especially in verse 18, that's where it says it. We will be specific in our prayers. So you have to be specific with the Lord in what's going on, what your situation is. Knowing that it's the spirits that work in these people. It's maybe if they don't have spirits, and it's an oppressive spirit that now is attacking them, and in turn, they're also attacking you. Yes, it's that complex. This type of stuff happens. But that's why you tell the Lord the situation and you're honest about it. And remember, you've been repenting. You're very clean. You know that this is not your fault. This is not your fault. And you're at, you're telling him what's going on and you're asking him to step in. Let's go to the next part. Let's continue on in Psalms 35 verses 17 through 26. The Psalms 35 verses 17 through 26. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destructions, my precious life from the lions. I will give you many thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are wrongfully my enemies, nor let them wink with the eye who hate me without a cause. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silence, O Lord. Do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my vindication, to my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so we would have it. Let them not say, we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who exalt themselves against me. So here you're asking the Lord to rescue you from your enemies, whether that's spirits, demons, curses, um, sins that are oppressing you. You're asking to rescue you from them once and for all and you don't want them to rejoice you don't want the enemy to rejoice in you going through your situation so you're asking to vindicate you and you're telling them, look you've seen everything Lord because God is everywhere at the same time and he knows he knows exactly what happened repeat that to him repeat that to him and ask him to vindicate you ask him for divine justice ask him to continue to scramble those demons and spirits confuse them so they don't come back and, and, and that sin doesn't come back, okay? Those, those people who are bullying you will not come back because you know what? God confused the spirits and the demons that are at work in them that caused them to attack you, that caused them to slander you or defame your character or mock you, whatever it was, or bear false witness. So he's going to bring those demons and spirits to shame because you asked him to and because you were righteous. So you should ask him to do all these things. Ask him to bring the divine justice. Ask him for vindic vindication. Because at the end of the day, if you're victorious and you can bring that testimony to somebody in the body of Christ, they're going to be edified. Somebody who's on the body of Christ will now be able to join the body of Christ because you're going to be able to give them that testimony. There is power in your testimony. I can't stress it enough. So there's nothing wrong with asking him to do all these things. Because we're not asking him to touch the actual people. No, we're asking him to have those demons or spirits, whatever is driving them, whatever behavior is driving them to do what they're doing to you, to turn. To be brought to shame. To be brought to confusion. To be scattered. And you have to, in order for this to work, you have to believe that he will do these things. I've seen it happen, so I know that this psalm does work for things like slander, collusion, and all that. Um, any issue that you're going through, um, a sin that's oppressing you. 
So these are the things that you want to say, you want to bring up. If you have to write a list, make a list. Make a list. And make sure that, again, it's the spirits and the demons, the curses, you can name them, and the sins that are oppressing you. Because that's what you want the Lord to scatter. All right? So everybody, let's continue on. Psalms 35, verses 27 through 28. The Psalms 35, verses 27 through 28. Let them shout for joy and be glad, who favor my righteous cause, and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. So at this point, you want to have the Lord, have the people who are in your corner, the people who are praying with you, the people who had your back, okay? The people who care about you, have them praise the Lord after your victory. You want them to praise the Lord along with you and you must praise him as well and tell everybody what he did for you. Give him the glory because the bottom line is, is that your victory is not just for you. It's also for God's glory. He wants to be recognized for what he did. And he wants other people to know that he can do the same for them. He can do the same for people in the body of Christ. He can do the same for people, um, you know, who aren't saved once they become saved. He wants that to be known. So you have to promise him that you're going to do that and you have to do it. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, next week, we will be discussing the spiritual gift of prophecy. Remember, like I said, we'll be going through each gift. And the following week, we will be discussing spiritual warfare in the world and how to handle that, like world affairs, politics, or anything that's affecting you um, or that you think is affecting you, okay? And how to pray against those things and be victorious as well. I want to thank you once again. Have a blessed week. Thank you.